Long ago, I learned the importance of reflecting on your journey, looking back at where have you been to better understand how to get where you're going. The best and worst experiences all have an important lesson about ourselves and each other. We have an obligation to get the message, so to speak, to learn the lessons. This past year, I visited new places, made new friends, and ate so much incredible food that is dizzying, all in a city that continues to show me parts of itself that I didn't know were there. I met people who found better lives here, others who are living out their dreams in this place. As I look back and reflect on all of the year's experiences, in an attempt to sum up what I learned, I find that I don't get very far, because all I can think about is the food. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a good meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. La comida es amor. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world, right here in St. Louis. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart. Just exciting. I think it's the best. To prove that food is love. It's gonna be delicious. Food is love. Love your food. At this point, I'm just gonna say it out loud. St. Louis is indisputably a food destination. The scene here is a mix of the old and the new that all seems to exist together at a rate of density that gives an endless choice of different places to eat, but it's ultimately the people here that makes it the exciting foodscape that it has become. I'm stopping in to spend time with the owner of Cafe Napoli, an immigrant that came to St. Louis as a teen with no family connection and nothing to his name. Italian restaurateur Tony Pietoso has been serving food in Clayton for more than 30 years now. Yeah. Even I would admit that I don't know a lot about Malaysia. You know, I grew up in Malaysia, which is a multicultural <clears throat> country. Every part of the life are influenced by a different culture. Yeah. From Muslim, from Indian, from Chinese. We are a big melting pot. Take in all the uh, spices, food, style, technique, culture, everything. At what point were you in Malaysia and decided you want to come to America? Um, early 20s. I think it's because of the uh, 90210. 90210? <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, you know, this is the wrong zip code. It is the wrong zip code, <laughs> it is. Family and service are the hallmarks of the Citizen Kane experience. But the other big reason that people come here is for the meat. To find out what makes steaks good enough for Citizen Kane's, I'm up with the sun, riding along with cattleman Brock Meyer of Meyer Cattle Company. I'm with him this morning as he checks some of his herd. Brock raises Black Angus cattle. Obviously, it's very important what they eat, right? Yes, it's very important. We work with a nutritionalist. Um, you know, that builds our rations for us. Uh, so, so much like a human's diet, it, it's balanced and it's... Is it good? It's a little dry in my opinion. <laughs> Di Gregorio is an old school Italian grocer that has all the specialties. Muffalata, olives, meats, dressings, just to name a few. A lot of cheese. Well, look at right here. Now. There you go, Danish Fontina. Danish Fontina, right? It's very good cheese. I appreciate There's you Danish saying that. There's Danish everywhere we go today. <laughs> How can anyone not be a fan of this? Everyone loves brunch. It's very delicious, thank you very much. And if you don't love little mystery dumplings filled with chicken, pork, fish, shrimp, then I'm not sure where that leaves you and I. But I digress. Okay. And keep it playful. I think that's what it's all about. All right. Almost immediately, I'm seeing this is going in a direction I didn't anticipate. How did I get into this position? Literally. Better yet, how am I going to get out? This isn't what I had imagined. Obviously, knowing nothing about jujitsu, I assumed I was going to be learning a couple of arm grabs, maybe some kind of little foot move to trip an opponent. Something more flashy, maybe a little less choky. When we roll, you're basically wanting to make sure this end, when it rolls, hits this part. Okay. Okay. So from the side, you can see where I'm at. You want, and then you want to take your hands, the, the, your fingers up here, so your thumbs are on this side, 
and then your fingers are here. As you're rolling this up, you want to push this in. Okay. And kind of hit that spot. Yes. And then kind of squeeze in. And then you're going to take this and then one more roll. And then kind of roll it. Yep. And then squeeze. And then you want to make sure this part's on the bottom. All right. Yes. Whoa. Look at you. Kisumi, a tiny Japanese fire truck turned sando pop up cot. Chicken yakitori and colorful milk bread sandos are a feast for the eyes. I'm trying to mimic konbini food, which is convenience store food. Uh, it's a lot more um, in, entrenched in Japanese society because they're always on the go, so they're always looking for something good. So it's not the same sort of gas station food stigma that is here. You actually get a really good meal at a konbini. I do about 70-80% pre-orders and they sell out uh, very quickly these days. And then I have a little bit for walk-ups. 